Hello my friends and welcome to the first part of Affinity Photo Essentials where I show you an easy way to approach photo editing. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you very much for that and let's get started. So in this series I'm not showing you an in-depth explanation on how the tools work, I'm rather showing you easy starting points on how and why to use certain tools. I prepared two pictures for this video, one is this beach, the other one is this child playing in autumn leaves. So on the first picture we can see that it is a little bit muted from the colors and the contrast so maybe we want to fix that. And one very easy method that would, I would suggest you try out with most of your pictures because it's very efficient and super easy is right click on the picture or the picture layer in Affinity Photo of course and select duplicate to duplicate that layer. And then with this duplicated layer selected go over here to the blend modes. You can see here when you click you get this list, drop down list and select soft light and you can see immediately with just two clicks we have fixed a lot of the issues of the colors of the contrast and the picture looks a lot nicer. You can see this is the before, this is the after. So really try this very easy trick, you duplicate it and then on the duplicate layer you set the blend mode to soft light. Okay, let's delete that layer and look at another method that gives us a bit more control. And this is the levels adjustment. So go down here to adjustments here and you get this list and from that list select levels. Okay, so a new window pops up and in that window on the top part is a histogram. And a histogram looks complicated but it is very easy to read. And the way it works is on the left side you have all the dark values, on the right side you have all the bright values and of course in the middle you have all the mid values. And this is basically a statistic of which values are used the most inside of your pictures. Below that you have some levers where you have these handles that you can move around and when you click on the uh, black one you can move it in and you see a line and the line moves with this handle and when you uh, observe your picture it's getting darker. So you can basically move it in until this kind of mountain here starts and this means in this case you're losing very little values in the darker areas because you can see there are not many values in here in the dark areas. In the bright, on the brighter side there are almost no values. So you can move this over like this again to the start of the mountain and you can see that in a similar fashion we have fixed the picture but we have a lot more control over the picture and uh, not over the picture over the settings. Another thing you can try here is the gamma value which makes the picture either brighter or darker so you can play around with that and see if this additionally makes the picture look better or in the way you want to have it. One thing to point out with any kind of setting is try to go not to extreme because even at first, even if at first sight it looks great, it's probably too much and will destroy the feeling of the picture. What I mean by that I will show you now. And this is uh, two filters down here under live filters you can click here and you see next to each other clarity and unsharp mask and a lot of people confuse them a little bit because it looks like they give you similar results but they really don't. So let's start with clarity first. The idea behind clarity is to bring out the structure in the picture if there is elements for structure. For example here we have the waves and the stone and stuff like that. So if you move this up you can see that nothing happens in this case. By the way, an important point, make sure that your adjustment layer is not a child of another adjustment layer because then it's not going to affect anything. So click and move it out on top of the other layers and now if I move it around 
it affects the layers below it. And you can see here now if I move it up, I get more details in my picture. I get more structure in my picture, but also it looks like the picture is getting sharper, which is not really the idea behind clarity. So only use clarity to bring out structures and patterns in the picture that you want to see or make more obvious and use it in a very soft way because you can see here, if I go 100%, at the first moment, it might look cool, but you will crush a lot of the detail. For example, in this case, the surface of the water looks like it's frozen. It's, it looks very harsh and sharp, like you could cut yourself on the waves, with, which of course is not the case because it's soft water. So move it down until you have the feeling that you can see the structure, but at the same time, you still preserve the feeling of the material that you're looking at. So the water is not getting sharp and hard. It's still staying soft, but you see a little bit more of its structure. Okay, let's go to the other live filter. So again, click here on the symbol for the live filters and select from your list the unsharp mask. This time we make sure it is not a child. So we have to move this out again. Click and drag to move it out, by the way. And a little explanation why this is called an unsharp mask compared to just sharpening, which would sharp every part of the image in the same way. This filter creates a mask for you that is based on the contrast and the edges in the image. And so it sharpens different parts of the image more or less. And in particular, it more sharpens the edges and less sharpens the, um, how can I say, the surfaces, the soft surfaces, because they shouldn't be sharp to begin with. Uh, uh, but the edges should be sharp uh, to look more crisp in the picture. Okay, again, when we look at these values, don't go too extreme. You can see if I push this up here, um, at the beginning, it might look cool, but uh, for example, I, I sometimes see people who give like a really extreme sharpness like that. And you can see that um, you get these kind of either very dark or very bright halos around the object. So it doesn't look good. It again crushes the picture, makes it look very unnatural and very flat. So it compresses the picture. Uh, down. So this is not what we want. In most cases, I would suggest if the picture doesn't need it in any other way, don't go below, uh, 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 above a radius of 1.5 pixels and don't go over a factor of 1.5. So you can remember that value 1.5 for both cases because in most cases when you go above them, your picture will start to look strange. Even in this case, you can see that we have really reached a maximum. So let's go down to one pixel and also reduce this, let's see, um, to like here. Okay, let's move on to the next photo here. And this is of the child playing in the autumn leaves. And often we have a wonderful scene, everything feels cool, but the light is not as warm as it could be and the sunshine is not as dreamy as it should be. Okay, so one trick I want to suggest to you is what I would call light discs. So you go over here to your ellipse tool. By the way, if you don't see an ellipse tool, just click here and hold your mouse button and this will pop out a list of different shapes. So select the ellipse tool and make an ellipse like that, for example. I can't see it because it's below the picture. Now it's on top. Okay, cool. And you can change the fill color by simply clicking here on fill. And we can select a color from our picture, a nice warm orange, uh, for example, in here, like that, which is actually the one we have already selected, so that's great. And now what we are doing is, first of all, we go over to the effects. So here, next to your layer tab is the effects tab. And 
activate Gaussian blur and when you move this little handle over here you can maximally go to 100 pixel but that's not enough for us so you can enter a number by hand where you can go even higher so in this case I want to use 800 but you can experiment with that and you can see that this gives us rather a soft disk that is fading out really wide around the disk so we go back to our layers and now we set it the blend mode to screen like this okay so now that we've done this so again here when you click here you get the list of blend modes you select screen as the blend mode and I will move this over here into the edge and then I'm holding my control key click and drag and this will duplicate the layer and I can do this multiple times let's do this one more time here in the edge so I can say okay well, the sun comes from up here and um, I will select all of these three layers I click one layer hold shift and click the lowest layer in my three ellipses and hold control and G to create a group so we have a group here now and now I'm again going control click and drag to completely copy the full group over here to the other side and I can zoom out a little bit move this over a bit more so we also have some warm light coming from here you can also like resize the shape wherever you need the light to be like this okay cool so this is how we can create a nice flow of warm light but of course the atmosphere isn't looking too warm yet and the way we adjust this is by going here to adjustments and selecting selective color this is a very nice trick and with that you go you can see here you can select individual colors to change we want to select the neutrals and with the neutrals selected you can play around with the levers you have in here again and see which brings you nice light for example the yellow will give you some good light and just play around with them and see what looks good to you what kind of feeling you want to have in the picture let's see play around with this a little bit that's not the right direction let's go like that okay good okay like that looks pretty nice and another thing we can do now that we have adjusted and we have this kind of very nice honey kind of feeling light we can also adjust the depth of field there is already a lot of depth of field in here but I want to um, like focus more on the child playing so we can go here to the live filter and select depth of field and this gives us this kind of construction here where we have an inner circle and we have an outer circle and we have this point here in the middle so the point in the middle moves the whole construction around and the outer points if you use them you can make this into an ellipse which of course in this case is very useful to us let's zoom out here a little bit and we want to have it over the boy like that okay good and this inner circle defines where the sharpness basically starts or where the blur starts it's going outwards okay let's zoom in again good so now if we use the radius by the way again the filter is a child of another adjustment so drag it out there we go okay good so now we can use the radius to make um the background blurred and in this case you can see here this is important when I make this very strong you can see we get this white line around the edges of the picture to not have that click here to preserve alpha and this will um, like preserve the outsides of the image so you don't get that effect of course we don't want to have this kind of strong effect want to have it just a little bit like that okay good so let's look at our light disks again move a little bit out can move this maybe a little bit in here and the other one maybe we rotate that a little bit 
So you can see these are really easy techniques to create a very nice and warm atmosphere in your image. Good, there we have it. And I will duplicate um, the original image just to show you the before and after. So this is our before image and this is our after image. You can see with very easy steps, very easy tools, we have made a huge difference to the look of the picture and have this nice warm autumn atmosphere that's very playful and very soft. Okay, thanks for watching and write in the comments what you want to see in the next essentials video of basic things on how to edit a picture, how to approach a picture. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.